So you can see, you didn't listen to men, but you listen to God. Whenever God calls you to do something, brother, sister, do it. Just do it. No matter whatever man say, no matter whatever your friends say, no matter whatever your wife or your husband say, once God says, do it, go ahead and you will never fail. Amen. Amen. You will not, the only time you will fail is when you listen to man. If you listen to man, then very soon that man will leave you. Even if it is your wife or even if it is your husband. Very soon that your wife or that your husband will leave you. Either he leave you through saying to you goodbye or leave you when she or he die. One of the other must happen. And somebody shall remain. Amen. So, but when you listen to God, from here to eternity, you win. You, you're gonna be a winner, and God will never ever leave you. Amen. And somebody shall remain. Amen. That's why I give God praise because I always listen to God. Whatever men say, I will respect your word. But when I'm sure of what God say, I go ahead and do it. Amen. Amen. So God is good. Okay. Um, let us now, we're going to now um, have our Holy Communion. But before we go there, I want us to read um, John chapter 6. John chapter 6. After the Holy Communion, then you can put those pictures, please. Um, John chapter 6. Um, John chapter 6 from verse... Um, God bless John chapter 6, uh, from verse 53 to 58. John chapter 6, 53 to 58. Our God is awesome. Our God is faithful and just. John chapter 6, 53 to 58. And the Bible says, I want to just point out some certain things there. The Bible says, Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except you eat, the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood had eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me, and I in him. As the living Father had sent me, and I live by the Father, so he that eateth me, even he shall live by me. Verse 58. This is that bread which come down from heaven, not as your father did eat manna, and are dead. He that eateth of this bread shall live forever. Amen. Somebody shall say Amen. The Bible says, he that eateth of this bread shall live forever. So you, you can just say only this little bread and wine. Yes, it is just this little bread and wine. But when you add faith to it, it becomes like heaven and earth. Can somebody shout amen? amen? You can imagine how big God is. God is a very, very big God. But he managed to be man and also God. Could you imagine the heaven and earth? How big God is. But God had himself in the womb of a woman. Amen. Amen. Even though he is the God of heaven and earth. But he humbled himself in the womb of a woman and became full man and full God to save us. Amen. Amen. Melchizedek could not save us because he did not take the form of men. And that's why Jesus Christ came and took the order of Melchizedek and save us. Because he took the order, the form of man, and then he saved us. 
because he suffered with us and then he could understand us and know all we are going through and that is why he forgives us whatever we do brothers and sisters the bible said the word of god you hear today have cleansed you have forgiven you can somebody shout amen, amen. so one of the reasons why you come to the presence of god that you come to church is you know that when you come to the presence of god and then you hear the word of god no matter whatever it is you are forgiven can somebody shout amen? amen? You don't need to be confessing your sins when you are in the presence of God because the word of God that you preach, the word of God that you speak have already cleansed you. The Bible says in, in John chapter 15, 16, it says the word that you've heard have cleansed you. So one of the reasons you should come to church, one of the reasons that you should come to the presence of God is when we preach the good news, the word of God will cleanse you, will wash you, will cleanse you, will make you whole. I want you to know that. Can somebody shout amen? amen? Because look at the thief, the criminal, in the presence of Jesus Christ on the, on the cross. After he has killed people and do everything, deserve to die, but Jesus Christ saved him. So what about you? You've not done anything that is close to that thief on the cross. So when you are in the presence of God, you are cleansed. You are washed. Your sins are forgiven. And because he himself has suffered for us. Okay, so verse 53 says, Without the communion, you have no life. Without this bread and wine, no matter how little it is, the Bible says, Without this bread and wine, you do not have life. There's no life in you. <laughs> and then verse 54 of um, John chapter 6 says, Without the Holy Communion, you will not be raised on the last day. You will not be raised on the last day without you eating the flesh and the blood and drinking the blood of Jesus Christ. The Bible says on the last day, you will not be raised. Others will be raised and then you will be there. So it's better you, you hunger for this and eat this. It's very little, but it stays forever in you. Can somebody shout amen? Amen. And then John chapter 6, 55 says, Holy Communion is food and drink. It says, is satisfying. The Bible says that man shall not live by prayer alone, but by the word that proceeds out of the mouth of the Lord. So it is food and it is drink for us. Verse 56 of the same John chapter 6 says, You remain in God and God remains in you when you eat the Holy Communion. Imagine the, whole, the God of heaven and earth living in you and you are living in God because of this little bread and the wine you are going to drink. That's why it needs a gigantic faith. You need that faith. Because as you put it in your mouth, God living in you and you are living in Him. Amen. Amen. Verse 57 of John chapter 6 says, Holy Communion gives you life forever and ever and ever. Holy Communion gives you life forever and ever and ever. Because Colossians chapter 1 verse 27 says, Christ in you is the hope of glory. Can you put that Colossians chapter 1 verse 27? Let us use that to summarize. Colossians chapter 1 from verse 27 says, Christ in you is the hope of glory. Colossians chapter 1 verse 27. So when you have this Christ body and the blood in you, it is the hope of glory. And the Bible says, to whom God will, will make known what is the riches of the glory of his mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of uh, glory. So if you want to have any hope to go to the kingdom of God, this is what is going to give you that hope. This little thing you have in your hand, that is the hope of glory. Can somebody shout amen? amen. So shall we bless this wonderful bread and this wonderful wine, which is going to be now the body and the blood of Jesus. So I say to you, don't you worry. Don't worry about your sins because your sins is forgiven. Only what you are going to do is sin no more. And somebody shout amen. amen. Because the Bible says, shall we continue to sin that grace of God may abound? No, you cannot. We cannot continue to sin. Because I tell you, nobody knows when we're going to die. 
Maybe today, maybe tomorrow, nobody knows. So you got to be ready at all times. So Father, we bless you for this wonderful bread, O oh God, and the wine, Lord Jesus, which is the bread, O oh God, Father, your body, and the wine, the covenant. I bless it, as it is in our hand now, I pray that you're going to bless us as we're going to take it, Lord Jesus. It will be the hope that we're going to meet you one day in that kingdom. Father, I pray, bless it as we eat it and drink even the blood of Jesus. Thank you, O oh God, for we believe and we have the faith that it is done, it is blessed, and Father, it is the body and the blood of Jesus. So now, please take out the, the bread. Jesus Christ says, and the night before he was betrayed, he gave them bread. And he says, give his disciples bread and says, this is my body, my body, my battered body, my suffered body, which I'm giving to you. He said, eat it. Just eat this body and remember that I suffered for you. So we are eating the body of Christ right now and we are remembering, yes, he died for us on the cross. Shall we eat the body of Christ? And the word of God says, after then, he gave them wine. And then he said, this is my blood, which I am giving to you. He said, it is the blood of the covenant. It is a sacrificed blood, the blood of the covenant. And he says, as you drink it, you are understanding and remembering the covenant I have with you, that I am with you even now. And forevermore. Amen. So may we drink the blood of Jesus and let him live in us. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. We're going to pray. Our Lord and our God, I want to thank you for this time. The Bible says, Lord, if we eat and drink, you live in us. And we have the hope of glory. That is the greatest thing that will ever happen to us. The greatest thing that will ever happen to us, to oh God, is that we enter into the kingdom of God. Therefore, Father, I pray by the power of thy spirit, that Lord, let this hope, O oh God, as we know that hope never fell. May we all, as we all are here today, may we all one day gather in the presence of God, rejoicing and praising and worshiping our God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Holy King of Glory, for your glory that is in us. Thank you for your presence. Oh God, thank you. Thank you. And I know as you're coming to us, you are healing us, you are delivering us. You are protecting us. You are covering us. That Father would not gonna be exposed to any danger. Thank you, O the King of Glory. For we are yours. And yours we are. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. amen. And amen. And amen. Can we get our pictures? Are you ready for it? Okay, can you show us that pictures quickly? This is um, the Science Cafe. That our brother put together. Beautiful. Oh. Give Jesus a clap. Of Jesus Christ is Lord. This is like London. Amen. This is this is great. Wow. Look at that. And somebody shout amen. amen. This is great. And somebody shout amen. 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 This is like university here. Yes. This is so good. And we have uh, can you can you get more? Put more, let's get. Yeah? Yes. So this is the computer side sections and everything. God is a faithful and a just God. Give Jesus a clap offering. Our God is good. And all these things is to the glory of God. All these things is for God's glory. So you can see that God is doing a great thing and God is working wonderfully. 
our God is good. So um, this is this is little London. <laughs> Can somebody shout a big amen? And look at the students there. They must be happy with their laptops, this chemistry. They must be happy with their laptops and everything. Our God is a good God. Jesus yes. Christ is sitting Lord. Yes, it is. I would love it myself. Amen. God is a good God. Look at them. They have been, this is this is um, um robotics. Robotics. Yes, yeah. robotics. Yeah. Yeah. Robotics. Yeah. yeah. God is a good God. You see, and these little children, before you know it, they start to produce all these things. They start to bring it to real. Our God is an awesome God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Can, can we give a clap of it to our Lord Jesus? Amen. God is good. God is good. Christ is Lord. Jesus Christ is Lord. Our God is a faithful and a just God. There is no one like unto God. Um, I was so amazed when he was sending me these pictures and little videos. It's so good. And I said to myself, God, you are wonderful. Okay, this is our new moon. This is the month of February. Can somebody shout amen? Amen. And we've got a theme this month. And the theme for the month that we're going to study and make sure we understand it is called the spirit and the blood. Can somebody say the spirit and the blood? The spirit and the blood. I want us to understand um, the spirit and the blood, how they are related. You know, sometimes some of us do not understand how we are made, how the blood, we have blood, and what's the work of blood. Some of us do not understand how did the blood come into us. And some of us do not understand. Uh, what is the soul? Because we are made up of body, spirit, and soul. The body, spirit, and soul. We know the body is clear, come from the dust. And we know that the spirit comes from God. But what about the soul? What about the soul? So all these things is things that we are going to, um, bit by bit, understand it. Because I believe in knowledge. When you have knowledge, you can be able to stand and defend and even preach the good news. And we know, I'm gonna be a little bit very, very quick, because I have a lot of, a whole lot of things to explain today. I'm gonna to just introduce it. We started the introduction on our night vigil, our power night, our breakthrough night. Please come to our breakthrough night. It's so wonderful. Come to our breakthrough night. So we started introducing this wonderful team from our breakthrough night. But I'm going to introduce it the further, a little bit further deeper today. So we understand that um, and we know that the Spirit of God was with God from the beginning. The Spirit was from the beginning. And God is the beginning. And the Spirit is God. Amen? Amen. In Genesis chapter 1 from verse 1, it says, in the beginning, Genesis chapter 1 from verse 1 says, in the beginning, God created the heaven and earth. That's where the spirit, when you say the beginning, you are talking of God. And when you are saying of God, you are talking of the spirit. And you are talking of the son. Genesis chapter 1 from verse 1, it says, in the beginning, God created heaven and earth. And the earth was without form. The earth was without form. And the Bible says that the Spirit of God hovered over the sea. The earth was without form and full of deep, the sea. And the Word of God said the Spirit of God now begin to make things happen. The earth was dark, was full of darkness. It was without form. There is nothing to glory about it. It was the beginning. But the only thing that brings life to the earth and bring light to the earth is the spirit of God. God himself, because remember what Jesus Christ told uh, the Samaritan woman, uh, the woman that was, um, yeah, the, the woman at the Jacob, uh, Jacob's well. Samaritan woman at Jacob's well. He said to her, God is that spirit. God is that uh, spirit. 
So let us know now that God, this Jesus Christ saying this, this is not Apostle Peter or Apostle Paul, say Jesus Christ himself saying, look, God is that spirit. Mm. And this is in John chapter 4, verse 24. But let us read the first. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the, of the waters. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. So the Spirit of God moved upon the, upon the face, the surface of the water. There was no light, and the Spirit of God bring light. And God said, let there be light. And the Spirit of God activates the light. And again, we know in Genesis chapter 2, from verse 7, James chapter 2 from verse 7. When God formed man from the dust, God made man out of the dust. There was no light. There was no life. Man was without form. Man do not have any, any breathing and breathe at nothing good in man. It was just a piece of dust. But the Bible say that God breath, the breath of God, which is the Spirit of God. The breath of God, which is the Spirit of God, enter into man. And when the breath of God, which is the Spirit of God, enter into man, then the Spirit of God produces the blood, which is the soul. And that blood, I want you to listen, that blood is a borrowed blood that you should walk with. You should keep it safe. You should keep it holy. That blood is a holy blood. Is God himself in you. That blood is God in you, inside you. That's why the Bible says that God made us in the image. In the image of God we are all mad. Can you read that this very um can you read this very um Revelation chapter 1 27 please? So we are all made in the image of God when that blood came into us by the power of the Spirit of God. And the Bible says, this is what the Bible says. The Bible says, man become a living soul. So the blood now came into us, and the man became a living soul. And let us see what Revelation chapter 1 verse 27 says. Revelation chapter 1 27, please. Okay, Revelation. Okay, let's go. John chapter 4, 24, please. John chapter 4, verse 24. And John chapter 4, verse 24 says that God is spirit. John chapter 4. Verse 24. Say, God is spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. God is spirit, and they that worship God must worship God in spirit and in truth. And somebody shout amen. amen. So God Himself is that spirit that enter into a man. Our God is a good God. Sorry, can you get me Revelation chapter 1, verse 5? Let's see what it says. Revelation 1, 5, please. Revelation chapter 1, verse 5. Revelation 1, 5. And it says, are we there? And it says, I'm from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead, and the priest of the king of the earth, upon him that loveth us and washed us, from our sins in his own blood. In his own blood. So the word of God is telling us that God is that spirit. Our God is a good God. And I want us to read uh, John chapter 6. John chapter 6 verse 63. John chapter 6 verse 63. Please. And the Bible says the Spirit of God is what gives life to us. The Bible says, it is the Spirit that quickens; the flesh profited nothing. The word that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. It says, the word that I speak to you, 
they are spirits and that spirit is life so the life we have today is given to us by the spirit and remember the spirit of god produces the blood which is the soul and remember it is the soul that will suffer will be, that will be judged if you sin it is the soul that will go to hell because the spirit of god is god and the spirit of god never die remember when you go to evangelism they ask you okay if jesus christ is god can god die they do not understand that God is spirit. Can somebody shout amen? amen. God never died. God is a spirit. Amen. So what dies is the flesh. Goes back to the dust. But even the flesh of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ took it. With him. To the heavens. Can somebody shout amen? amen. So the word of God also teaches us. In Leviticus chapter 8. 22 to 26. It's a life is in that blood. So this word of God that becomes life produces the blood because the life is in the blood. The life is in the blood and the blood comes from the spirit and the blood becomes the soul. Amen? Our God is a good God. So the life, Leviticus chapter 8, 22 to 26, yes. So the Bible says the life is in the blood. It says, And he brought the other ram, the ram of the consecration, and Aaron and his sons laid their hands upon the head of the ram. And he slew it, and Moses took up the blood of it, and put it upon the tip of Aaron's ear, and upon the thumb of the right hand, and upon the toe of his right foot. The reason why he put in all this uh, blood is that the blood is what gives life. The blood gives protection and the blood gives life to every one of us. So the blood of Jesus Christ, it gives protections and the blood of Jesus Christ gives life. Can we get uh, Leviticus chapter 17 verse 11 please? Le Leviticus 17 11. So this one is the blood that, Mos that Moses used to cover uh, protect error. Can we read that? And Bible said, For life of the flesh is in the blood, and I have given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your soul. For it is the blood that maketh an atonement for the soul. He said, I have given it to you. Remember the, the, uh, the first one we read says, um, Moses, take the blood, put at the tip of Aaron's ear on his finger. On his toe. He said, I have given it to you because that the life is in the flesh. The life of the flesh is the blood. And I have given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your soul. For it is the blood that makes it an atonement for the soul. So we can understand that the life of any one of us today is in the blood. And the spirit is the one that gives the blood. And then the, that blood becomes soul. That's what the one that feels. You feel pain when somebody touches you. It is the blood that makes you to feel that pain. Our God is a good God. And then, if we read Romans chapter 8 from verse 11, please. Romans 8, 11. And Romans 8, 11 is telling us about the spirit and the blood. And it says... But if the spirit of him that rise up Christ from the dead dwell in us, he that rise up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. That it is the spirit that rises us Christ from the dead. If you dwell it in us, he that rise up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit. So the spirit who give life to your mortal bodies. Without the spirit, there is no life to your mortal bodies. And that is why the Bible says in Mark chapter, uh, Mark chapter 8 from verse 8, it says, What shall it profit a man if he can gain the whole world and lose his soul? It cannot profit any man, anyone, anything to gain the whole world and lose the life. If you lose your life, say, what a waste of life. What a waste of life. 
will not profit us anything. So the spirit produces blood and the blood gives power to the soul and the soul is life. God was the father of Adam, first man Adam. Just as we read from Genesis chapter 2 from verse 7, we say God breathed through the nursery of Adam and Adam became a living being. And also we see that God is the father of Jesus. We know that Mary do not and Joseph do not come together as husband and wife and sleep together to for Jesus Christ to come. The Bible says Mary, Mary asks the question, how will this thing be? How will it be? Can you read, can you get me uh, get for me, please? Luke chapter 1, 20, 26 to 35. Luke chapter 1, 26 to 35. When the angel of the Lord comes to Mary and said, You are you are you are blessed, you have a child. That will save the world. You have a savior a right in you. That is a question. That is a question that Mary asked. He says, How will this be, knowing that I do not know any man? And the angel of the Lord said, Don't you worry that the Spirit of God will overshadow you. The same thing that the Spirit of God did to Jesus, did to Adam. The Spirit of God came into Adam, and Adam became a living soul. And the Spirit of God came into Jesus, came into Mary, and Jesus Christ became a living soul. Can somebody shout amen? amen? And again, I want to even take it further to, I want to take it further to the discussion of Jesus Christ and Nicodemus in John chapter 3. Jesus, uh, Jesus told, told Nicodemus, except you are born of the water and of the spirit, you cannot inherit the kingdom of God. He that is born of the water is, is what? He that is born of the spirit is spirit. And he that is born of the water is, is of the water. And Nicodemus asked the same question that Mary asked. And he said, how can this be? Nicodemus asked the same question that Mary asked. He said, how can this be? Can somebody shout amen? amen? So when he put uh, uh, John chapter 3, John chapter 3 from verse 1 to 18, John chapter 3 from verse 1 to 18, I said, Nicodemus asked, How? Verse 9, put that verse 9, put that verse 9, please. Let me see what the verse 9 said. John chapter 3, 1 to 18. Okay, put verse 18. Let us have verse 18. Bring up verse 18. Thank you. Bring up verse 18. I want us to get the same question that Mary asked. Mary asked the angel. Nicodemus also asked the same question. The Bible says, verse 18, He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Say, he that believeth is condemned, and he that believeth not is not condemned. Can you get, get it down for me, please? Let's read from, from, I want to get that question so that we can understand that very wonderful question. John chapter 3. John chapter 3. Yeah. Okay. John chapter 3. Okay. Let's get, let's get uh, verse 4. Nicodemus said unto him, How can this be? He says, How shall he said unto thee? Jesus answered, Verily I say unto thee, Except a man be born of the water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That, oh sorry, I'm reading verse 5. Verse 4. Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of the water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. My will not have said to thee, You shall be born again. The wind bloweth, weareth it listed, and thou heareth the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it comes. And where it goes, so is everyone that is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus answered and said unto him, How can this thing be? Amen. Amen. Verse 9. He says, Nicodemus says, How can this thing be? The same question that Mary asked the angel. But how can this thing be? So it is the same the lineage. Can somebody shout amen? amen? So, we have another life when you are born again. 
you have a new spirit, you have a new blood that is running inside you. A, puri a purity blood that is running inside you when you are born again. And to quicken this blood, Jesus Christ said to the disciples that don't go nowhere in uh, Acts of the Apostles chapter 1 from verse 8 to 9, please. Acts of the, Acts of the Apostles chapter uh, 1 from verse 8 to 9. So in this respect, you know, on the Pentecost day, the apostles were also born of the Spirit. That's a new church was also born of the Spirit. I just, I'm just trying to introduce the Spirit, the work of the Spirit, how the Spirits have been working from the beginning, from the beginning, right from the beginning up till to the uh, time of the new church. As of the Apostle chapter 1 from verse 8 to 9. And the Bible says, But you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and you shall be witness unto me both in Jerusalem and in Judea, and in Samaria, and unto uttermost part of the earth. And when he had spoken this thing, why there behold, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. He says, but you're going to wait. And then you're going to wait. And what happened in Acts of the Apostles chapter 2 from verse 1 to 4? Then the Spirit now came. Can somebody shout amen? amen. He said to them, don't just go. You need to be born of the Spirit. You need this Spirit to come into you. So that it would purify your blood. So that it will sanctify you. So that it's with this spirit, with the spirit of God will empower you. Because without the spirit of God, there is no power. Because without the spirit of God, you are still living in your sin. Can somebody shout amen? amen. And that's why Jesus Christ said to Nicodemus, except you are born again. Because when you are not born again, you are still born of the blood of your father. Because the blood, the blood of your father is contaminated. And that blood is not going anywhere. Can somebody shout amen? amen? That blood is contaminated. And Jesus Christ said, wait, wait, wait. You got to be born again. Another blood will be given to you. I'm assuring you, just as the word of God says, except you are born again, you will not enter into the kingdom of God because you are carrying a very, very dirty blood. That blood need to be washed by the same spirit that started it all from the beginning of the creation. By the same spirit that born, that born Jesus. The same spirit Jesus Christ is giving to his disciples that they should be born of the same spirit. And the Bible says, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them clothing tongues like a fire, and it sat upon each them, each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit of God gave them utterance. And the Bible says, when the Spirit of God came, he said that was a, a wind. That's why Jesus Christ told Nicodemus, the wind blow it. You just hear the sound, but you don't know where it comes. So the Spirit of God is wind, is blowing. And the Spirit of God is fire, because God is fire. And the Spirit of God is, is power. And the Spirit of God is pure. It brings purity to us. You don't know how it comes. Nicodemus said, how can this be? How can this be? Mary said, how can this be? Because you don't know how it's going to come. But the Spirit of God blow it and it's going. You will not look, there is wind right inside this house. How, where is it coming from? Is it coming from this door or that door? Is it coming from the back or where is it coming from? You don't know. This is the work of the Spirit. Can somebody shout amen? amen. So the Bible says the new church was born by the Spirit of God. So we now see from the beginning, Adam was born through the power of the Spirit. And Jesus Christ was born through the power of the Spirit. And the church was born through the power of the Spirit. The same Spirit. Can somebody say the same Spirit? The same Spirit. The same spirit. Oh, glory be to God. So Jesus Christ is a great God. And what happened when Paul went to Ephesus? And see them, you know, wearing their old jacket. 
old garment. They are, their sinful life is still there. He, he cannot see, he cannot see a, a life in them. He cannot see power. He cannot see the, the light of God in them. And he said to them, you are you, you efficient. How, how, how was you baptized? How did you repent? What has happened to you? If you go to as of the Apostle chapter 19 from verse 1 to 7, we are summarizing now, please. Our God is a good God. As of the Apostle chapter 19, 1 to 7. And the Apostle Paul was asking them, through which, through whose do you were you baptized? Which type of baptism do you receive? And it came to pass while Apostle Paul was in Corinth. Paul, have you come to what Apostle Paul? Uh, has it come to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul having passed through upper coast, come to Ephesus and finding certain disciples, he said unto them, Have you received the Holy Ghost since he since you believed? And they said unto him, We have not so much as had whether there be any Holy Ghost. <laughs> and Paul said, No, 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 no. And he said unto them, Unto what then are you baptized? And they said, Unto John baptism. Then Paul said, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him which should come after him that is in, on Christ. Verse 4. When he had those, when he when they had him, they were baptized in the name of the Lord. And when, when Paul had laid his hand upon them, the Holy Ghost came upon them, and they speak with tongues and prophesied. And all the men were about twelve. And somebody yeah. shout, Amen. Amen. Jesus Christ is Lord. There is no one like unto God. So you can see the work of the Spirit from the beginning. And it's still working today. And the Word of God is still, uh, is still powerful. But unless you are born of the Spirit, you cannot inherit the kingdom of God. So we can conclude the Spirit of God gives blood which is life and our soul which uh, uh, which we go to either heaven or hell so the spirit of god give life through the blood and this blood become our soul and it is this soul that we go to heaven or to hell because this soul is like, I describe it as we can understand it very, very quickly. The Bible says uh, the parable of the servants, you know. The, parables, the Bible says that a, a, a master was going to a far country and gave to his servant talent. Some he gave ten, some he gave five, some he gave two, some he gave one. This is how the power was shared. And then he said, those that he gave one buried it. They didn't make use of it. And then he cast them to, to hell. Now, you have got the Spirit of God. Make use of the Spirit of God that God has given to you. If you do not make use of the Spirit and of the soul, of your soul and of the blood that God has given to you, you're going to be cast to hell. God forbid. Can somebody shout God forbid? God forbid. And the word of God gives us examples again when Jesus Christ came and the, 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 the parable of the sheep and the goats. He says, the ones that make use of the blood and of the soul. I was hungry. You feed me. I was naked. You clothed me. I was in prison. You visited me. He said to them, enter into the life, into eternal life. But those that did not do it, they didn't make use. They didn't make use of the blood. They didn't make use of the life that they have. They waste their life. And the Bible says, you go to hell. That is hell. And that is heaven. And somebody shout amen. amen. You know, some people, when you preach outside about hell and hell, they say, don't, don't talk about hell. Jesus didn't preach hell. Jesus Christ preached hell everywhere in the scriptures. Jesus said that the, the rich man go to hell. And the poor man go to Abraham's bosom. Amen. Amen. What shall it profit us if we gain the whole world and lose our soul? So I want to draw a conclusion here as we are going to pray. I want you to understand that there is power in the Spirit of God. And the Spirit of God comes from God. 
And that spirit that comes from God comes with the blood. And the blood is our life, just as we read in Leviticus. The Bible says, the life, your life, my life is in the blood. And that blood comes from God. And we know that the new church was born through the same spirit, through the same process. So now Adam, Jesus, the second Adam, and the church. Can somebody shout amen? amen. So you can see there is power in the spirit of God. And that spirit of God is that that produces your soul, which is your body, your, your blood. So understand this. When we are talking about that is power, power, one that work in power, in the name and in the blood of the Lamb. You know how it comes. The spirit comes from God. The spirit is God. Jesus Christ said it. The spirit is God. God is that spirit. So our God is a good God. Can we stand up, please, in the name of Jesus? You see, whenever somebody asks you, when you go to evangelism, if you are watching our streets and market evangelism, streets and market evangelism, I'm going to post one um, to, today. Please, if you are on our chat, please watch it to the end. If you can, fast forward it to the end. Fast forward it till five minutes to the end, and then you will see the challenge. You will see the challenge. You will you will understand. You will see Muslims, they rounded me. They rounded me. And they were both there are like five or six of them. And thank God, one sister, I don't know where she came from. She just came and then we thank God it was so amazing. God is a good God. They want to know something. And I tell them that Jesus Christ is God. I tell them Jesus Christ is God. And Jesus Christ is coming back again. And I said to them, didn't your book tell you that Jesus Christ is before Abraham? They know that Jesus Christ was before Abraham. They know. It's written there. But they still argue. And I said, do you see, do you see that Abraham was before Moses? I said, do you, do you understand this? I said, Abraham was before Moses. And uh, uh, Moses was before David. And Jesus Christ was before Abraham. What do you think? After Abra before Abraham, what is that again? The beginning. Yes? Can somebody shout amen? amen? So have this in your mind. This is the battle. We are, in the, we are living in a battle. In a battle world. We are fighting. And not by power, not by mind, but by the spirit. So we are going to pray. We are going to go to God. Because... We have, the, we have had the word of God. And the word of God is that that heals us. The word of God is that that delivers us. The word of God is that that strengthens us. The word of God is that that empowers us. The word of God is that that brings down the glory of God. That brings down the spirit of God. Because the Bible says God speaks. Once God speaks, then the power is released. What God speaks, His word. When God speaks His word, the power is released. And the moment that power release is released, life come. Can somebody shout amen? amen? So I want you now to begin to understand this. That the word of God is powerful. Mm, thank you, Jesus. Our God is a good God. Begin to worship God. Just thank God for the word that you received today. I'm assuring you, something is happening in you. Something is happening in you. That is power. That is moving in you. The power of God is moving in your life. The power of God is cleansing you. The blood of Jesus Christ. Remember this blood was put on Aaron, no, Aaron ear, Aaron hands, and Aaron toe in order to protect Aaron. This blood, the blood of the lamb, was put in Aaron, Aaron's right ear, his right hand, and his right toe. To protect, to mark Aaron. And I am assuring you today that as you are receiving this word of God, you are being marked by the blood of Jesus. Amen. Can somebody say, I am marked? I am marked. I am protected, I am protected. By, the by the blood of Jesus. The enemy will not see me. The enemy will not stand me. The enemy will fail on my way. The enemy will never ever succeed. In my life, in my body, 
in my spirit, in my soul, because I am marked, and I am washed inside out, and I am surrounded all everywhere, all sides. Therefore, I am protected. And the enemy cannot see me. And the enemy cannot see me. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, please, if you can, lift up your hands. We're gonna we we'll have five minutes. Lift up your hands. We're gonna do something great. Believe it. Remember, faith. Faith is that that bring make Jesus Christ to enter into the womb of a woman. Mm-hmm. Mighty God entering into the womb of a woman. Mm, humbled himself. So you gotta have this big faith. You gotta have this big faith. Because the Bible says anything that is done without faith is sin. But in the name of Jesus, as we lift up our hands, oh God, I pray that the power of the Spirit of God will move. The power of the Spirit of God will touch, touch every one of us. Heal us. Deliver us, set us free, build us, sanctify us, glorify us in the name of Jesus. For I pray that the power in the Spirit of God, Father, will produce that blood, that precious blood, that blood, that blood, that blood that will make us whole. For I pray, purify. Every one of us here, purify our blood by the blood of Jesus. Purify us because our life is in the blood. Our life is hidden in the blood. And the blood becomes our soul. Therefore, I pray in the name of Jesus, the Father, you will touch. You will touch. You will touch. Touch us. Touch our family. Touch our children. Amen. Touch our husband. Amen. Touch our wife. Amen. Touch our siblings. Amen. Touch our parents. Amen. By the power of the blood. So will you heal us. So will you deliver us. So will you give us strength. So will you give us power. In the wonderful name of Jesus. Right now I want you to open up your mouth and pray. Talk to God. Talk to God. The Bible says when you open up your mouth, God will feel it. That which you need. That which you need. Yase ke brakaha. Lintore ke brakese. Sharamakine kasele. If you can speak in tongues, begin to speak in tongues. Broken a sele yi ka prahosia. Lintore kia ka baba la tele kasia. Linka broken a sele tolo ki ka prahosia. Linka brakama la kasele kasele tolo ka. Lesele ka brakala sele ka brakosenta. Tala ka brakole sele ka brakala sele ka. Lintore ke brakole sele ka brakole sele ya. Lintore ke brakole sele ka brakole sele ya. Lintore ke brakole sele ka brakole sele ya. Lintore ke brakole sele ka brakole sele ka tantara. Something is going to happen right now. I see the Lord. I see the Lord. He's highly exalted. And his angels cry holy. All the angels cry holy. All the angels cry holy. All the angels cry holy. I see the Lord. He is highly exalted, and His glory filled the temple. 
and his glory filled the temple. One more time. And his glory filled. One more time. And his glory filled. One more time. And his glory filled the temple. And the angels cried, Hold him. All the angels cried, Hold him. All the angels cried, Hold him. God is highly exalted and his glory filled the temple. As the glory of God is filled this temple, Father, I pray that the glory will fill the temple of the heart, the temple of the soul, the temple of the body of every one of us here and of every member of Rock and Tessensor Ministry, so long. And Father, let there be deliverance. Amen. Let there be healing. Amen. Let there be breakthrough. Amen. Let there be deliverance. Amen. Let there be healing. Amen. Let there be breakthrough. Amen. Let there be prosperity. Amen. Let there be prosperity. Amen. Let there be holiness. Amen. Let there be holiness. Amen. Let there be righteousness. Amen. Let there be righteousness. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. But I worship the Lord Jesus as we touch the glory. Because they are glory filled in temple. As we lift up our hands and touch the glory and behold the glory. Father, I pray that glory will touch every one of us, will build us. That glory, oh God, Father, will change us. That glory, oh God, my Lord, will open way for us, will open great sea for us. That glory, oh God, Father, will bring, oh God, Father, all those, oh God, wonderful um, food and quails. Father, I pray that their glory, oh God, oh God, will give us. Oh God, water from the rock. For I pray that your glory will lead us, oh God, through the wilderness. For I pray that your glory will push down and will pull down the wall of Jericho on our, on our faces. Oh God, let that glory, oh God, lead us, lead, lead us, oh God, cross River Jordan, oh God. And let that glory, oh God, lead us, oh God, to, the, to that promised land in the name of Jesus. And let that glory establish us. And let that glory build us. And let the glory heal us. Amen. And let the glory deliver us. Amen. And let the glory set us free. Amen. And let the glory build us. Amen. And let the glory lift us up. Amen. Let the glory lift us up. Amen. Let the glory lift us up. Amen. Above our fellows. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, I decree that every one of us here will be blessed today in abundance by the power of the Holy Spirit. Tomorrow, oh God, Monday. Father, every one of us will be blessed as we go out and as we come in from the rising of the sun to the setting of the sun. Father, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday again. Father, I pray from the rising of the sun to the setting of the sun, Father, we will all be filled with the glory of God in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, I thank you for your children, O God. Father, I pray as the people will be going, O God, they will go in your glory. Amen. They will receive, oh God, joy. Joy will break, oh God. There will be water, clean water in the valley. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. There will be pure, everlasting, rushing water in the valley for every one of us. In the name of Jesus. Amen. And this year, and this year is the year of our rivers of joy. Amen. For by the end of this year, oh God, every one of us must have received all that we desire. Amen. For the Bible says, your desire will be granted. Amen. This year, this year, I need testimonies. Amen. By December 31st, I want every one of us here to testify that all that I desire this year, God has given it to me. Amen. And the next year will be another new year and new desire. Amen, Lord. Father, I want to thank you, Lord Jesus, because you, you've answered all our prayers and you bless us and you keep us from falling. Thank you, Lord, for healing us. Thank you, Lord, for delivering us. Thank you, Lord, for giving us a breakthrough. Thank you, Lord, for making a way for us. Thank you, Lord, for your blessings. Thank you, Lord, for your protection. Thank you, Lord, because you've marked us. Thank you, my Lord Jesus, because you've strengthened us. Thank you, Lord, for your blood. Thank you, Lord, for the blood of Jesus. And thank you for the gift of the Holy Ghost. In the name of 
Jesus. Amen. Thank you, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And amen. amen. And amen. amen. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. And surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life. And we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever and ever. Amen. Amen. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus have set us free from the law of sin and death. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.